Um, this is, okay. yeah, I'm sorry if, I'm sorry if I make some mistakes. This is my first That's okay. academic conference. And also okay. I'm running on two hours of sleep because my <laughs> flight got delayed last night. Uh, but yeah, I made it here. So That's um, the point. this is, um, I mean, I'm doing this after a lot of very interesting presentations about pedagogical approaches. And this is, I guess, somewhat related but less about teachers and teaching. Um, this is one of my, oh yes, now they can see me. This is about one, my, one of my uh, research projects regarding parental med mediation, mediation methods regarding cyberbullying and its effects within, specifically within China. Do I just click on it? Yes, I do actually. Um, so people's daily lives have been drastically changed since the introduction of the internet. And as this technology become more and more wide, widely adopted, children are starting to adapt to these changes as well. Um, children uses, children's use in the internet to do just about anything, but especially social, uh, because the internet allows people to communicate in a way that doesn't have a lack that you would associate with traditional media. Um, so, and especially given any kind of social interaction could happen in virtual space, uh, children that might engage in just physical bullying in person would also might engage in cyberbullying or suffer from being cyberbullied. Um, cyberbullying behaviors inflict upon their victims psychological distress such as depression anxiety loneliness uh, even to suicidal ideation and the negative consequences of these behaviors are becoming more of a concern to the general public and to educators parents and researchers alike and this is why yeah i've this is why i have chosen the topic i've chosen um, most of the researchers investigate how to reduce the affirmation negative consequences and produce that parental mediation served as an effective way to mitigate cyberbullying effects. Um, so, um, basically, wow, I did not make that transition. Um, so the structure of the presentation today basically is just my study, essentially. Uh, I'm sorry if the layout's a bit wonky because I had to export it last minute. But um, how much time do I have? How much time do I have? Uh, two minutes gone. So you okay. still 23 minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so cyberbullying refers to woeful and repeated harm inflicted through the medium of like electronic text. Basically, is essentially social media and internet. Um. I've listed some examples of cyberbullying, essentially. But I, yeah, everyone knows what cyberbullying is, right? I don't have to really explain what cyberbullying is. Um, so basically, cyberbullying. I, I there's one specific thing about cyberbullying I want to point out that differs it from traditional other means of bullying, is that it involves the internet as the assemblage, um, as uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so in socio-materialism, soci sociology literature, assemblage often refers to when human, non-human practices, ideas, and discourses come together to form a giant system. And in this, in this case, the cyberbullying perpetrator and victim are literally assembled by the internet or the technologies that we access the internet with. Um, and the advantage to the per perpetrator of internet is that the internet allows them to remain anonymous and hide behind the anonym anonymity of the internet. And they can inflict distress on a victim almost anywhere without repercussion. And 
it removes the constraint that traditional social norms of morality puts on bodies. <coughs> oh. Sorry. Oh. Um, <coughs> so one, one half of my research question um, One half of my research question concerns cyberbullying, and the other half of my research question, of course, concerns parental mediation. And um, here it means strategies employed by parents to manage their children's relationship with media. It's like a more academically rigorous definition of parenting. So um, the effect of parental mediation on cyberbullying victimization has been very well established by previous research. Um, studies from Meidu and from Nanyang Technolo Technological University uh, looked into a high amount of parental mediation decreases children's disclosure of information online. Um, another one by Michelle Wright from Masaryk University found that parental mediation acts as a buffer between cyberbullying and victimization and adjustment difficulties. So currently there has been a few studies on the subject. Uh, and in the study, I'm specifically comparing between three kinds of mediation. There's the active mediation, where essentially you're talking, you're talking to your kids about what to post online or what not to do online, like what's okay like being very proactive in your engagement with your children and the internet. And there's the restrictive mediation, which basically is you can't use your phone after a certain time of the day or a more restrictive in, on their behavior. And there's also the non-intrusive media inspection, which is basically I follow my children on social media. And I look what they post. Um, and my this research basically compares between these three kinds of mediations. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, like like I, as I was saying, um, the study aims to investigate the differences between the different mediation strategies. However, the study also. Um, I also looked into how gender moderates the different effects. Um, sorry, yeah. So specifically, I've mentioned that there is a lot of research being done on this, but there has not been a lot of research done specifically within China. And China is a very interesting case because um, the internet space is very unique in China. The, the social media platforms they use are different. For example, like WeChat, which a lot of Chinese students use, um, children use, they limit the about ability of accounts. Like if you're not friends with these accounts, they cannot see your posts, which I think theoretically should make um, cyberbullying more difficult because sometimes you're being bullied online by strangers, essentially, but you can't do that on WeChat. Um, so the, the uniqueness of the internet sphere within China makes it worth investigating. Also, the fa family dynamics within China's adolescence is also different from the cohort of current studies, which mostly study a Western Anglo-centric um, audience. There are several studies done on Czech and I think Latin American students, but those are even rarer. I, I haven't um, currently the the literature on Chinese adolescence is a, is a gap. So I would like to fill that basically with this one. Um, so the hypothesis of my research is that active mediation is more effective than in decreasing cyberbullying, specifically victimization and and perpetration and restrictive mediation. Um, so, um, 
the data I have had was obtained using convenience sampling online between January and March. Um, so we obtained consent from both children and parents prior to the survey. And it was collected in a way that the parents and children are, the data between parents and children are paired. So the parents who completed the survey, actual parents of the children who also completed the survey. And uh, we've designed the sample as such because some variables in the study, parental mediation, according to previous studies, are more accurate when you measure it from the parents than from the children. And other variables, such as like cyber bullying victimization, are more accurately measured from the children. Like uh, children have a better gauge of whether they've been cyber bullied than their parents, because sometimes children don't report those things to their parents. Yeah. So, can I just uh, check the time again? Still, uh, plenty of time. Okay. Something that's so I'm just, so I'm just very, very stressed out. Um, yeah. Again, I I apologize about the layout, but um, so the children age we've sampled is from eleven, what very loose uh, definition of children, but yeah, from from eleven years old to twenty one years old, and the sample size is seven hundred twenty one. Basically, mostly collected online, and you cannot see the numbers here, but out of the parents, uh, it's fifty nine. 0.6% female and 40.4% male. And the mean age of the parents is 44-ish. They mostly use, every day they basically spend about five hours long, online on average. Um, and in terms of education, 62.4 um, finished what in China you call a junior and middle school, which is a junior high school in the United States or like middle school here. And 28% finished high school and 9.2% finished undergrad. So that's generally the, uh, and I've also put their income, which is about the same in terms of, I just want to go through the demographic variable really quickly because they're not, as interesting as actual, yeah. Anyway, if, for the children we've sampled, um, it's there's sixty two point three percent female and thirty seven point seven percent male. So the female population is slightly overrepresented within the sample, and the mean age of the children is sixteen years old. Spends slightly more time online. Than Parents, essentially. Um, for each of the variables we're interested, so the three kinds of mediation and the two variables associated with cyberbullying, they're all measured using like a Likert scale. So from one, which means not at all, to seven, um, which is very frequently, almost daily. Um, and each one was also measured from several items and averaged out. I'm so sorry, um, but yeah. So each we we measured each um, variable using several items, and we average out the scale basically on each one. Treat them treated them more like a, a a continuous variable. And so for our analysis analysis, we ran a ordinary least squared hierarchical hierarchical regression analysis. So basically, um, on each step, we measure the difference in the R square and see if basically increasing a factor or a method of parental mediation actually make a difference in either your child being cyberbullied or cyberbullied others. Um, so um, we had four blocks and each block, um, we basically put them in in our assumed 
um, causal order into these four blocks. Um, and we run, we run the regression once on the entire data set, and then we run it again based on the two genders to compare the differences. Yeah. And come on. Yes. So, okay. Um, I, I, I was scared about running out of time. So I, I had a giant data table that I thought I would put up there, but I feel like that's not really helpful in terms of presentations at the moment. But generally our final result from the entire data set was you showed that active mediation strategies are negative, negatively associated with cyberbullying perpetration and victimization. Essentially, telling your kids what to do online helps them to be cyberbullied less. Or the more you do it, they, the less they would be, be engaged in acts of cyberbullying or be cyberbullied less. And this, this generally agrees with the existing literature on the subject. And also gender influenced the effects of parental mediation. And again, this also agrees with the existing research in the same way. And drawing from previous literature, the possible reasons for the correlation being stronger for girls than boys is that perhaps girls typically report more mediation than boys. And uh, when when Given the same amount of mediation, girls typically report. However, parents generally offer more mediation to girls than boys in general. Um, this is from previous research. This is not from this is not from me. Um, but yeah. However, restrictive mediation in this study is not shown to be significant in decreasing cyberbullying related behaviors, which disagrees with previous studies. And um, this might be due to the unique situational factors because of Chinese fam family dynamics or the inter internet norms within China. Um, <laughs> it could also just be that our sample wasn't good enough because we couldn't conclude that. But yeah. Uh, like, I mean, that was mostly it. Um, I. There's several limitations to this study that I would like to talk about. Um, the data we obtained was self-reported, so it obviously has its biases. And um, it's only conducted at a point in time, and it's not like, there are several longitudinal studies on this subject that would offer, work, offer way more insightful conclusions on the subject because um, parental mediation obviously works differently with 11 year olds than 20 year olds. So, it, and parents would offer, often employ different mediation strategies based on their children's ages. So, yeah, that's, that's mostly it. It's very short. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.